this is Mickey. Today we're continuing our sessions on the a Lightroom masking tools and today we're going to concentrate on the radio masking tool. Now the radio masking tool is one of those that seems simple in its design and use but honestly it's my most favorite tool and it's very flexible and just has many many ways to enhance your photograph depending on where you apply it and how it's applied. So let's dig right in and take a look at this tool. First off, we're going to access our masking tools by the masking icon in the upper right hand corner. We're going to click on this little circle which is going to show us all our masking tools and we're going to choose Radio Gradient. Now when we do that, just like we covered in the last sessions, we're going to get a list of masks that we're going to be applying or have applied and the tools to make changes to that mask. To start out with, you'll notice that my cursor is a, with a little plus mark and we're just going to hold our mouse button down and drag and as we drag you can drag down and left or drag and right and it will make a radial gradient if you want to make a perfect circle let's uh, we'll get rid of this right here if you hold your shift key down and draw your radial gradient it will draw a perfect circle now, the parts of the radial gradient are just kind of like the linear. In the very center, we have our pen, and the pen allows you to move it around and put it in whatever location you want the radial gradient to be applied. The next is our 50% or mid mark, mid align of our gradient. And beyond that, it goes from 50 to 0%. Now, this gradient we also call a feather. And what you see in the center here, around the center ring, is the feather of the gradient. And that's the fall off or the gradient of the effect that's applied. So let me just put a little exposure in here. And you can see, oh, let's make it darker so it's easier to see. So as you can see, the very center gets 100 to 50% of the application right here, 50% to zero from the inner line to the outer line. If we grab the little red dot and extend out our feather, you can see more of the circle is affected. It also makes the contrast between the inner and outer line much more defined. All the way to we get to a 0% effect, or a 0% feather right here. And as you can see, the changes in our gradient is zero. So we have a very stark line between what wasn't changed and what is changed. So as we drag our red, red dot back in, you can see that our feather gets greater and that the change is very gradual. And honestly, that's probably what we're looking for most of the time, a very gradual change from the center to the very edge of our gradient. Now the feather can also be changed if we look over here on the far right under radial gradient, we have a slider and it does the very same thing. Just moves our feather in and out. And the good thing about a radial gradient is that you can make changes after the gradient has been applied. So you can get it in place and then start messing with your feather and your exposure, things like that. Now, let's look at these other lines. Let me bring it down here just a little bit. And we see we have a dot on each portion of the radial. If we hover over it and drag, we can extend the size horizontally or vertically. If you want it to be constrained to the size you have, just hold your shift key down and it will equilaterally expand or contract that radial gradient to whatever size you want. If you just want to move one side, because you notice if we grab here, both sides move, horizontal or vertical. They're both going to move. But if you hold your option key down and grab one, it will just move that one side. And when you're sizing this to a certain area that you want to affect, that might be something that you really want to try. So let's leave it about like this. Next you'll see that there's an extra dot here. and This allows you to rotate and get this radial gradient in just the position that you need. You also can hover over any part of the outside uh, line and do the same thing. Just, but just for standard, it does give you this this one line right here. Now once you get this in place, if you want to see what your changes looks like and these lines are driving you crazy, you can hide all this by clicking the H key. 
it will hide all the the lines and dots so you can see what changes you can still make changes to the amount of the feather over here and to the exposure so once you get it in place you can start fiddling with it and get it just the way you want with the feather 0% all the way to 100% and exposure. All right, I know I covered this earlier in our linear masking, but let's go over this menu for mask real quick. At the very top, you have an eyeball and that turns off the mask so you can see what it looks like with the mask applied and without the mask applied. You have the plus mark, which allows you to put new masks on. It lists all the masks that you have available. Then we have the mask itself, and it has a little three dots next to it and brings up another menu. Rename allows you to rename the mask that you're working on. We'll call it Sky One this time, and you can always just double click on the label and change it that way. The next item is Invert Sky One. What it's going to do is change the mask to be exact opposite. So we're not touching the area that's masked, and everything around it has been darkened. By hitting invert again, it brings it back to its original state. Duplicate invert, it makes a new mask and inverts it. So we'll have two masks now. We'll have the sky mask, which is in place, and then we have the inverted mask, which we could then lighten or darken the area that is not at part of the original mask. So we're going to delete this one. The next one is intersect with, like I said, these are ways to modify the Sky One mask by using other masks. And I'm going to make a separate video on how we do that. Duplicate Sky One, that's all it does is just makes another mask exactly like the original one. Hide, hides the mask. All right, it's the same way as if you were to hit click on the little eyeball. Click on the eyeball, we can see it. Click on the eyeball again, we can hide it. That's all that menu does, the very same thing. Delete Sky One, removes the mask completely, deletes all masks, deletes all the masks that are applied to the photograph. You want to be real careful by selecting that. All the work you've done, if you have five masks, will go away. And that's all the menu items uh, in the three dots. You have the hide button. This uh, eyeball turns on and turns off the mask. Show overlay. When we turn this on and we're looking at a mask, Let's turn this on. Show overlay. It's going to show the red overlay. You can turn it off by clicking here. You can also do the same thing by hitting the O key. The O key turns on the overlay. O key turns off the overlay. And finally over here you can change the color of your mask by just selecting the color. Let's say we want to make it green. Select this, show the overlay, and you can see now it's green change it back to red and we're good to go all right now that I've shown you basically how the radio gradient works let me show you a couple examples of how we can use it in special ways the first way I want to show you is to use part of the gradient off canvas as well as on canvas so we can get only part of the effect that we need let me show you what I mean we're going to grab this photograph and we're going to make it a little smaller Command or Control minus will reduce the picture. Command or Control plus will increase the size. So we want to decrease the size so we can see more of the off photo canvas. And we're going to create a radial gradient and we're going to draw it from the top into the photograph. All right. And we want to make the feather 100%. So either we're going to drag feather all the way to 100% or we can grab the red dot and bring it all the way in so we have 100% feather and we're going to want to affect this portion of the sky it's just a little too bright for me I want to make it more even so I'm going to drag my radio gradient up to where the overlay is pretty much on that part of the photograph as you can see almost all half or at least half of the gradient is off canvas but we're still getting the effect of the fall off from the 100% in this area all the way down to zero. So now that we have it in place, let's just bring down the tone, the exposure, just a little bit, about like this. And you can see it's making a more even uh, 
exposure of the sky and really if you wanted to bring more color in like we wanted to bring in more blue we could bring a little more blue in and maybe bring in a little clarity and see how much more even and a, just a better effect of the sky that we have using that type of gradient now there's one other one that I use on a kind of regular basis and I want you to use your imagination here a little bit and pretend like these skies really aren't uh, dark and uh, menacing we're consider we'll consider this is a bright sunny day and the Sun is over here on the side and it's coming into this little field of yellow uh, yellow grass and flowers and we can kind of simulate a, a Sun ray coming in and we're going to create a new radial mask and we're going to draw a very thin mask about like this now we're going to grab the top or you can grab this line here and we're going to make it about where we want the sun to come in. So I'm going to feather it out really wide. And I want the 100% to start here. So I want to extend this out. And what do we do? We hold our Option key down. And that allows me just to bring this side down into it. We'll keep till we get it just like we want. And now I'm going to grab my exposure. And I'm going to increase it just a little bit we don't want to overdo this might bring a little color of the ray of the Sun in a little golden like this and as you can see we get a nice effect of what appears to be the Sun streaming in from the right Let me just make it a little more golden now if we hit the little eyeball here we can see what this looks like in effect and not in effect in effect and not in effect and remember when we put the effect in place we still can control you know the tone because we put exposure in there and we put color in but let's say we like the color with that exposure remember we also have the amount slider so if we grab the amount slider we can decrease the color and exposure in equal amounts so let's bring it down just a little bit right like this and though we can see it pretty much the user or the the viewer of your photograph might not notice it so let's turn it off and turn it on see it, it it's, a, it's a pretty good effect even though somebody looking at the photograph might not even notice that this has been applied and you can always just play with it more if you want to extend it out more into the picture you can do that you can move the where the feather starts by grabbing your pen and seeing how much you want to bring into the picture just by doing this if it's not on the angle that you want you just come down here and move your angle any way you want and let's bring the effect up so we can see exactly where we are and then we'll bring it back down so that looks like about the right angle that we're coming in from the Sun and hitting the golden area of this field and all we do is just bring it gradually down till we get the effect that we want and even though we bring it down to where it looks like it's disappeared if we ha actually hit the little uh, eyeball here you can see it is definitely still there so those are the two of the more unique ways that we can use the radial filter all right let's try one more example if you're like me I learned the best when you show me how to apply these gradients to a real photograph and how you process it so that's what we're going to do here this is a photograph from uh, Leiden in the Netherlands. It's actually the home of the, one of the Mayflower descendants before they came over to America. So let's take this photograph and using only radial gradients, let's see what we can do with it. All right, to start out, let's just uh, use auto to get some of our changes automatically. And I'm going to use the transform tool to get it kind of straightened up. All right, so that's our basic changes about like this. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to apply a radial gradient to this portion of the photograph to bring in some of the, the to knock out some of the shadows or bring in a little light. I'm going to grow, put a large radial gradient on here and I'm going to turn up the exposure and bring a little shadows in so we can see what's in the shadows and maybe add a little clarity to it right there next thing I want to do is I want to put another radial gradient on and in this one we are going to put it down here in the corner 
so we can see what is in the dark here in the corner. We don't want too much because we, we do like shadows in our photographs, so we don't want to totally kill them, but there is something down here that we can see. So we'll bring the exposure up, we'll bring the shadows up a little bit, bring it up too much and we kind of bring in noise to the dark, so we don't want to give too much, just add a little contrast to it. Then I want to put another radio gradient down here underneath the chair because again it's got some blocked up shadows and we want to bring a little of those out so we can see the chair we'll bring in a little shadow not too much let's bring that down just a little bit all right now um let's see if we adjust our amount slider if we get anything better there eh, not too much next i want to bring in another radio gradient and i'm going to bring in some of the light coming in from this window. I want it to be real broad because the window is real broad. I'll hold my option key down and we're going to drag it in like this. Maybe narrow it up just a little bit. Now knowing that the sunlight comes in it's also going to hit the back side of this little box and there should be no light there so we'll actually kind of subtract the light from it. Uh, so it doesn't look unnatural. Okay, let's bring the exposure in. Maybe add a little color from the sun warming up the, up the scene. And now I'm just going to fiddle with it till I get just about everything I want in the position that I want. What I'll typically do is crank it up real high so I can see exactly where it's hitting and then I'll bring it down from there. Hold our option key here so we could widen this up a little bit. All right, that looks about right, so now we'll bring the exposure down. We might even look at the feather a little bit, see if that makes any difference. Uh, a little bit, but not a lot. I'll leave it about right there. I like the effect about like that. Like I said, you can see if we turn the overlay on, we have some red right here and we don't want any light on this side of the box because the light came in uh, before uh, just the top of the box should be hit. It shouldn't be hitting there. So we're going to go to mask four, which is this one right here, and we're going to subtract and we're going to subtract with our brush. There's our brush right here and we're just going to stroke in here and take all the red away because there should be no light really hitting this portion of the box. There, let's turn the overlay off. That way it keeps this in shadow, which it should be. If we crank it up now, you can see none of the light is really spilling over on the front portion or the back right here. And let's tone this down. I'll leave it about like that. The last thing I really want to do with a radio gradient is we have some candles going on right here. Um, I might, let's do this, let's throw a radio gradient on the very top up here, 100% feather, and we're just going to tone this down just a little tiny bit, not a lot. The fact that's almost too much, let's, let's widen out our gradient like this. And bring the tone down just a little tiny bit. Now we want to grab another radio mask and we're going to make it around and the candles and we're going to put it right in the pin right in between the two candles right here. And let's increase the exposure just a little bit. This might do good with a little dehaze here. Yeah. So we'll bring up the dehaze just a little tiny bit. Give it a little texture so we can see the candles in addition to the glow. Let's see that is probably enough right there. We want to make it a little warmer, about like that. There. So now we have, let's hide all our pins. Turn off our masks so we can see it. So here is our photograph before after, before, and after. 
So that's how we use the radio gradients on just a little scene inside a room. Just four or five gradients can really make a big change in how the photograph presents itself if we can bring out the shadows and enhance some of the light coming in the photograph. I hope this helps you out. If you guys have any questions or anything that you want to know about the radio gradient or any other gradient, be sure and drop me a line and I'll help you out as much as I can. Thanks.